Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. My name is Paul Shingongo. On the show tonight we look at the state of governance. I'm joined by Winter Kabimba, State Council is the president uh, for the opposition economic front party. At some point he also once served as justice minister under the patriotic front as well as being the party's secretary general during the presidency of Michael Chilufia Sata. State Council, it's a pleasure having you on the big hour tonight. I'm looking forward to an informative discussion. Thank you, Paul, and good evening, viewers. Great. Remember, we're live on DSTV Channel 279, also live on Go TV Channel 27, as well as Top Star National Carrier on 102 Balas Pe Custom, also live on our Facebook platform, that is KBN TV. Want to get interactive with you? tonight on the topic under discussion the state of governance in zambia what is your take on the subject tonight are we making progress as regards to the state of our governance here in zambia you can participate on the program by sending in some of your comments uh, questions and views on our live feed on facebook but there's also a number that is rightly displayed on your screen you can use that number to send in sms's and we shall at some point during the program get to read out some of those messages in case there are questions state council will be at hand to answer those that he can answer uh, let's begin uh president Kaima, let's begin by getting your thoughts your two cents on um the state of uh, the economy before we get to the state of governance i would want to get your description your brief analysis on where we are as a country uh you've served in government before a senior level you're now from the other side of the opposition uh, look, looking at the buckets and, and observing like i've done this before where what you're doing i've been there before how would you describe the current wheels uh, of the economy being driven by the upnd government can we say that with what we are seeing what we are seeing under the leadership of president Daka and Hichilema, zambia is on the right trajectory in uh, growing it uh, economy uh, look for uh, the economy is a headache to every government the economy is the, what determines the livelihood of any country and therefore the management of uh, economy should should be priority number one to the government and the, the deliverables from the economy must get a feedback from those that the economy is structured to save in other words the ordinary person on the street okay we have a problem we have a problem in in Zambia and many African countries where those that are in power are the ones that you know or beat the drum beats of uh, the economy is working the those economy in power. is delivering yeah those in power I, I would think myself that it must be the people that are at the end the receiving end of uh, the performance of the economy that should be able to say the economy is delivering uh, back home it is not an exaggeration and it is not politicking to say that the economy today is worse than it was one year ago it is worse than it was two years ago it is worse than it was three years ago in terms of what it is intended to deliver and the uplift the life of the ordinary person now this doesn't sit very well with the, the UPND because the UPND are priding themselves in you know 
we have structured this economy and is delivering better than it was doing in the past. That's not true. Maybe the question that, that, that we beg answers based on what you've said, when, yeah. when, you, when you say that we are worse than uh, the way we were a year ago, two yes. years ago, what <coughs> parameters are you using to, to come to that conclusion? Well, you can, you can um, 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 uh, let me make one confession. That mm. the, I'm not an economist. Mm. I'm a lawyer by training. Mm. But even just from the elementary economics that he, you know, I'm well versed in, mm. uh, you can pick a few parameters. You know, firstly, let's, let's get the general one, you know, life expectancy. Okay? There's, there's no doubt that Zambia's life expectancy is sliding downwards. That's a reflection of an economy, life expectancy. Secondly, deaths, let me pick on this one, deaths arising from treatable diseases. There are many of our people today in the compounds and in the villages that are dying from treatable diseases on account that they can't access drugs, you know, in health centers and in hospitals. Food. If you do not have enough nutrition mm. from the food that you eat, mm. then the defense mechanism of your body collapses and you become vulnerable to the simplest diseases that are not supposed to afflict a human being and even cause death to you. So food is important. It shouldn't be a luxury. And, and food means a balanced diet for a human being with all sorts of nutrients in it. And that food must be affordable mm. to the ordinary citizen. Okay. Issues of, for example, potable water. We still have many of our people in the compounds that have a pit latrine here and five meters away there is a well. Mm -hmm. They're still drinking that potable water, which consequently results into diseases, dysentery, typhoid etc etc the issue the issue of of uh, food potable water is can also uh, relate you know to the issue of the general health of a human being okay now let me zero this in or you know and say this there's no doubt. I know that in this country we don't use the economic surveys, we don't use the uh, uh, posters, you know, we don't uh, use the statistics uh, uh, that effectively. But if, 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 if one went round, you know, today, I think it would not be an exaggeration that 60% of our people, if not more, are not having a balanced diet. They can't afford even the basics of nutrition. They can't afford a bag of mealy meal. They can't afford bread, for example, if they want to have bread for breakfast. They can't even afford porridge because they have to decide whether they should have porridge for breakfast and have lunch, you know. So they have to work out the, what do you want? Do we eat breakfast in Mwanawanga or Tiembekezi Kawunga ka Kankale Kapa lunch or Kaumazuro? That's that's what goes on generally in you know. It is it is it is it is very easy for for uh, those of us in the other other uh, 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 strata of society 
uh, to believe that uh, life out there is uh, generally sustainable by our people. It isn't. So the UPND has a lot of work to do. The, the small plastic bags that HH was carrying around during the campaign and waving to the crowds of people and say you can't afford minimum Mugula Tuunga, Mukapame, it was not even a Pamela, it was less than a Pamela, maybe a quarter of a Pamela. And then the friends that came from the crowd with high expectations, mm -hmm. if this is what you are saying, then you understand our problems. That's, that's the impression they got. Then he put that down, mm -hmm. he got another plastic bag, you know, with just a drop of cooking oil in the corner. Mm -hmm. And he says, you can't afford this. And the people answered back, said, we agree with you. So they looked at him like the Messiah, a man with a group of men and women who understand the problems that they were going through. Unfortunately, unfortunately, those problems have not gone away. They have not gone away. They have not gone away. So really, in summary, mm. the economy is still sliding downwards and rapidly so. The narrative from the UPND and the HH himself as president as he goes round, you know, or the statement he made recently in Scotland that if somebody came to Zambia, they would think that he uh, UPND has been in power for five years because of the improvement. Yes, in terms of ruin, yes. They would actually be shocked that uh, UPND has ruined Zambia you know, in two years as if they have been in power for five but years. Th that have ruined quite a lot in, th in this space? Ruined? Yes, they have ruined quite a lot. Yes. What, yes. what, what, what have they ruined? I think it would be important for Zambia to, to, to understand. Maybe let's also zero it down to, to, to the issues of democracy. Uh, you served as, as Minister of Justice. You understand this. You are State Council. So <laughs> this is your field. But again, even before I get to, to this, many have described the political environment now to be very conducive for, for institutions like the Economic Front to operate now under the new dawn administration they've talked about the rule of law being respected they've given you freedom of assembly now as opposition you're now able to to, to hold rallies here and there uh, compared to uh, the way it was in previous regimes under the pf for example how would you describe uh, especially now that you are running a political party so you understand this from this perspective are you better off now under uh, the new dawn administration as the opposition do they have have enough room now to operate and maneuver and operate uh, before, uh, other than before? Uh, but look, we are dealing with the principle of relativity. Mm. Okay? Mm. We are dealing with the principle of, of scale. Mm. Okay? There's, there's, there's definitely an argument mm. that uh, one kg is heavier than uh, half a kg. Okay? But it, does, but it doesn't mean that uh, one kg is, is uh, the actual weight. Okay? So the principle of relativism is when you try to, to canvas an argument, to advance an argument, which is uh, simply comparative. Okay? Now, that's, that's, that's not a very intelligent way of uh, approaching a problem. And that, that, that's the approach that you, you used to describe the state of the economy. You yourself, Council, did indicate that uh, uh, the state of the economy is worse compared to the way we were a year ago, compared yes. to the way we were two years ago. So yes. it's, a, it's an approach you've used. No, no. no. I, was, I was actually being, you know, I was actually being emphatic. I was being, I was being absolute. Mm. Okay, I was being absolute, mm. you know, with, with that. I was not, I was not making, a, you know, a hypothetical comparison. What I was saying, what, I, what I'm saying is that uh, the fellow in Chivoria couldn't afford a 25 kg bag three years ago. He still can't afford it now. Okay, and probably. Even that Pamela that he, he was able to buy two years ago. Now we can't afford it. Now we can't afford it. 
So, 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 so that's not a, a half kg and one kg yeah, it's comparison. A, it's, it's comparison, really. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 uh, so when you talk about democracy, when you talk about democracy, it's the same. Okay. If you say the, if we say the, okay, how many, how many uh, media houses were stormed by PF cadres? Okay. Ten. How many media houses have been stormed under UPND? Six. Does that vitiate the principle that there is still, you know, political cadre violence? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Just because of the scale. It, see, it really doesn't. The principle is that there should be no political cadre violence. That's, that, a, that's, that's the ideal, and I think everyone that, understands. That's the ideal, that's, that's an the, expected situation, yes, right? That's, that's the ideal, and not yes. only the ideal, that is what HH promised. Hmm. That's what HH promised. Okay, if he, if he had said to the Zambian people, or oh, political parties today are being, you know, they are being refused to, to assemble, you know, um, five times in a month. I will allow them to assemble for three, three times a month. So would have said, what is the difference between the three and five? Get out. You are just the same as the people that you are trying to get, you know, to, to push out of government. What, what he did, he, 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 he promised an absolute situation. This will never happen under my administration. Nobody will ever get arrested arbitrarily under my administration. Okay? Nobody, you know, will be denied the police bond under my administration. Okay? Nobody will be searched unnecessarily, but you know, without you know, the due process of the law. So the man was very absolute about the principles. So he was actually, you know, dealing with the, a zero platform of resolving Zambia's problems. So to, to turn this argument now and become charitable to him and say, oh no, but you see now, you know, there is a press freedom, you know, and the, no, no, no. I don't, I, really, I don't think that you are being fair to the man. You are just making him worse. Okay. Is, is, he, is, he, is he living up to the commitments when, for example, we talk about the state of democracy in Zambia, and I'm glad you've given those examples. Currently, is this administration living up to the, to the promises that they made to the Zambia? No. No. In fact, let me, let, let, let me come at this point. Mm. You know, my view is that uh, we must start moving away from the Western narrative that democracy means and entails only free and fair elections. Yes, that's what it means in the United States. Yes, that's what it means in the Scandinavian countries. Yes, that's what it means in the UK. Okay? In our situation, Democracy, democracy should actually start with the, the election. Mm. So the fact that you have had a free and fair election does not necessarily mean that the government that will be birthed out of that will be a democratic government. I hope you understand my yes, argument. Yes, 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 yes. Okay? Mm. The fact that the fact that you know, election observers come here and say that 2021 elections were free and fair. Does not mean that, therefore, the UPND government today is a democratic government. No. So we need to move to other benchmarks. Yeah, I think of what democracy yeah, is. I think they are, they are universally accepted tenets of exactly, democracy. Yes. Exactly. So, if we moved to those benchmarks now and start checklisting UPND, for example, the rule of law, equality, one of the fundamental principles of the rule of law is equality before the law. That every citizen, however poor or rich, they are equal before the law. And one of the collateral presumptions or tenets or principles of the rule of law as enshrined in our constitution is the presumption of innocence. That 
is enshrined in our constitution that an accused person is presumed innocent until and unless they are proven guilty by an established impartial tribunal that's when their guilt sets in and yet what we have seen in in UPND is really an adulteration of that principle of innocence. Some may not agree actually with what you are, you are, you are trying to buttress of uh, the President Kabeva because uh, just last night you, on this very seat, one of the conversations I was having with the, uh, the chairperson for the Parliamentary Accounts Committee, the National Assembly, Honorable uh, Mambazi, uh, is, is some of the concerns that have been coming from, from the Zambians that see the PF were labeled to be uh, a bunch of, of corrupt individuals by the UPND government. But almost two years now there are no convictions and one of the arguments is that see the process the due process of the law is being followed if truly there, there was a witch hunt i think we'd have seen many now the saving sentences but now we are seeing all all of them now maybe arrests and investigations but no conviction because the process of the law the due process of the law is being followed the rule of law is being uh, respected no uh, you know you know as Zambians, you know, we must we must try to call a spade a spade if we are going to construct a just society. Okay? We must call for a spade a spade. You know, you can't argue with due respect to Honorable Mambazi, if that's what he said, you can't argue and say that he, now because the cases are being delayed Therefore, it means that uh, people are observing the due process of law. I mean, we saw a lot of people, you know. If, if HH, if, it, if they didn't have the due process of law under PF, HH would have been hanged. The beneficiary of the, of the principle of innocence until you are proven guilty is HH. If Edgar had acted arbitrarily, he would have hanged him through some kind of kangaroo court. Okay? So, so let's, let's, let's see, interrogate facts as they are. There are many, many UPND uh, guys, including HH himself, you know, arrested and granted the police bond, you know, or bail. Many cases. Let's speak on a few examples now. And one of them that really comes to mind is the injustice against Mugipi. 427 days in prison, in detention. And just, on, just, on, and, only to be acquitted. And ju justice prevailed at the end of the day? No. Yeah. No, you don't call that justice. Yeah, what, what, you don't, you don't what, call what, 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 do you, what do you call it? It, it, is, it is injustice. You know, you only call that justice if he, the state had allowed the, the judgment to be delivered. Regardless of the number of days she was in detention? Yes. Because I think the that, state yeah. must, must have allowed uh, the court to deliver the judgment so that uh, the citizens know one way or the other about the Mumbipiri's position. As it is now, that was clear, clear, arbitrary detention. And an abuse of the Nole Prosqui. The exact complaint that HH had in the opposition. The problem that I have with HH, I'll be honest with you, is hypocrisy. That's the main problem that I have. Yeah. That's, that's my departure point with him. You are, you are calling him a hypocrite? Yes. He's a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. A daylight hypocrite. Mm. Because a lot of that's things... That's a strong statement, President Kavir. No, no, no. A hypocrite is a hypocrite. <laughs> okay? It's like a thief. There's no half thief. <laughs> it's like sin. There's no small sin and, and big sin. So HH is a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. Because everything that he said... Mm. 
and condemned as being wrong against PF, he has done exactly the same, if not worse. What do you call that in English? In the English language that I learned is hypocrisy. The, 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 the failure to honor your word publicly to give out your word and people don't want don't want to only listen to your word they also want to see your action but but, but don't you feel you're also being too too hard on president because you of all people know that uh, the law is not in, in, in his hands it's, there are certain systems that it is he has no powers to because certain cases are the, the law must have heard must. That, i've heard that argument paul no no but but don't you feel it's it's, it's a logical argument I've, I've uh, heard. president Kabe, but it's a logical argument i've heard that argument. Uh, unless you want him to be interfering in in in, in the legal system I, i've heard that argument let me tell you this mm. let me give you a short story <laughs> that will illustrate that president secretary mm of Guinea, Conakry, uh, had a foreign minister by the name of Diallo Teddy. That was in the 70s. And uh, Diallo Teddy went to Sekuture, mm. you know, and said, can you allow me to resign as foreign minister because I want to become Secretary General of the OAU. And I can only become Secretary General of the OAU with your support. So, Secretary said, you have my blessings. Go ahead. The guy resigns as Foreign Minister of Guinea, French Guinea, Conakry. Goes and he campaigns. He was known to, to many African leaders, the Nyerere, the Kaundas, you know. He actually made a trip here to come and campaign with KK went to Tanzania to campaign with Nyerere and all of them gave him their support. What happened after that? Sekuture gets his cousin to also file nominations from the same country. From the same country. So Diallo Tell is surprised. How is it that the same man who gave me the blessings now he has his cousin he also as a candidate. He took a gamble. Diallo Telly won the election as OAU Secretary General. You know what he did at the end of his term? He locked them up. He locked him up. Arbitrary detention. And Diallo Telly was not given any food in prison. He was not given any water in prison. And before he died, from starvation, he wrote a letter to Secretary and said to him, I hope you don't treat any member of my family to death the way you have treated me. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you really think that it was the prison orders who were so cruel that they didn't want to give the other the food? They didn't want to allow him you know, to have a glass of water? The answer is no. The point I'm conversing is this. Anybody that is going to tell you, and I know HH said this when he arrived from France and Scotland, mm -hmm. that he had no idea, no idea what was happening at the ECO's house. He had no idea. That was a policy, you know. That is a lie. And I've served in government myself. That's, that's a privilege that Michael Sada gave me. So I know when presidents are lying. Okay? So anybody that is going to tell you, no, HH doesn't speak to the IG, lie, number one. Anybody that is going to tell you, no, 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 HH has never spoken to the, uh, to the uh, commissioner DEC, lie, number two. Okay? I, because I, 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 are you saying that all these investigative wings cannot perform their duties unless they get instructions from the head of state? Not in Africa. Forget it. Not in Africa. They, not in Africa. They, and not in. They Zambia. can't operate without getting instructions. Not from the you know, but you know, but don't don't buy that lie. 
Don't buy that lie. And I'm telling you from experience. That's, uh, Don't buy that's, that, that lie. That's what you used to do. So you, maybe you, you, you think everyone is, is doing what you used no, to do. No, no. In when, fact, when, in, when you're serving in government. In fact, in fact, I'll tell you. I'll, yes. tell, you, I'll tell you the difference. Mm. I'll tell you the difference. Mm. The difference was that uh, on a few occasions, mm. I used to confront Michael Sato. I used to confront Michael Sato and say, "You can't do this." Because this is not what you said. So he's not here to defend himself. Maybe you're also okay. part of the people that were also giving instructions to, 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 to the virus wings to, to... You know, you know the goodness is that everybody that I worked with Paul is still alive. Mm. Everybody that I worked with. And, and if somebody came here and said, the winter gave me instructions, that's not defamation. So just get one. If you can't find one person, half a human being. No, because what, what, what you're raising is very, very important. It is. Coming back. When you say that it in, is. in Africa it's not possible for these investigative wings to do their job uh, um, objectively without getting instructions uh, from the head of state. Not you're objectively. You're using the wrong word. Independently. Not objective, independently. They can't operate independently without no, getting instructions no, from the president? No. It's, it's not possible? No. no, no not, not, not getting instructions. Let's put this in context. Yeah. Not, not, uh, not without getting instructions. Hmm. They can't operate independently without this consciousness of what uh, the boss wants. Okay? And civil servants are very good at reading uh, the psychology of the boss. That's an assumption, President. Come no, no, I was there. I'm not giving you yeah, an assumption. But that, that, that's an assumption. That, no, it's that not a if, presumption. If, if, if I am uh, the director at the Anti-Corruption Commission, I, I have to think and start reasoning what does the President want to happen to the ECO, for example, then I act in that way. It's an assumption. We, uh, look, have you followed the... Uh, but, but, uh, but, uh, let me leave this because it's, it's a matter that is in court. Uh, you know? I want to tell you this. Mm. I want to tell you this. And I want to tell the nation this. Okay? That there is no independent institution today that can be oblivious to what the head of state wants. None. Maybe you're speaking from your experience, President Kareem. Yes, I'm speaking from experience. So you think every government is operating the way you are operating the that is, government? That is the culture. That is the culture of an African government. That is the culture of, of, of the Zambian arrangement. Okay? I'll tell you. Let me give you my personal example. Hmm. Let me give you my personal example. If you remember, there was a tribunal that was set up against me for some allegations. Yes. yes. Okay. I went to President Sata. Now keep on going to, back to him. You are saying he's not here to defend himself. There's nothing to defend <laughs> himself. I went to President Sata one morning, mm. and I found with him a letter that had been written to him by the Chief Justice at the time from Bechiba Sakund purporting to seek authority from Michael Sata to set up a tribunal against me. And he, he shows me the letter. He said, read that letter. And I read the letter. Yeah. And I said to him, write back and say, they must go ahead and set up the tribunal. Mm -hmm. Why are you showing me the letter? Mm -hmm. Okay? I knew that that could not have come without Michael's authority. No ways. No ways. So he was behind the setting up of the tribunal. But trying to hide in the wings of the Chief Justice. I'm intelligent enough. Okay? And then what does he do? I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a personal example so that he, I, I don't want to talk about other people. <laughs> and then what does he do? He says to Guy Scott, uh, now that there is a tribunal that has been set up, I have to suspend the Minister of Justice. Okay? So Guy Scott says, comes to me and says, you know that the man is about to suspend you until the end of the proceedings of the tribunal. 
I said, oh, that's what he wants to do. So I went to him. Because me, I'm not a coward, you know, saying the truth. It costs me nothing. There's no commodity in shop right called the truth, <laughs> which, on which I have to spend money, you know, to. So I went to him and I said, what is this story that I hear that you want to suspend me because of the tribunal? Now, here is my position. Even if, if this tribunal pronounces me innocent, I'm not coming back to your government. You can find another minister of justice. So go ahead and suspend me. There's no way the chief justice would have done that alone without the consent. You don't believe in the you you, you, you don't believe in the autonomy of these institutions. I, I'm, I'm I'm giving you living examples. I'm not hypothetical. Mm. This is not from a textbook at the University of Zambia. I'm giving you a hypothetical. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a living example involving me. I've left HH now. Mm. I'm telling you. Mm. And I saw this happen. Okay? I've given another example of HH almost being arrested. I went to confront him. I said, what has the guy done? Now, if you are telling me that he, Michael was a villain and everybody that followed after him is a saint I'd find it very difficult to believe were you so I'm giving were, you were, were, were you suspended in, the, in that in that example you've given no he changed his mind oh the man knew that what he was doing was not right <laughs> and you know it is very difficult to, for you to live with a clear conscience if you know that what you are doing is not right. There's something you did maybe uh, at, at, that, at that point that could have inst instigated. I was acquitted. I was acquitted by the tribunal. I was acquitted by the tribunal. I was a clean man. Okay? I was acquitted by the tribunal. You, you, you've never, just to dive a bit, you've never been a, fa a favorite, even in various camps that you are, you are found in. I, I, I don't know what exactly seems to be wrong with, with, with your, your leadership style, whether it's your leadership style or not. You do not seem to be a favorite in systems where you're found. I'll give a very uh, living give example again of give, yourself. Give me an example. Um, when you were relieved of your duties as Justice Minister, the entire nation celebrated I've, I've never seen jubilation over <laughs> someone's dismissal uh, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's a very interesting one that's a very interesting one I'll tell you I'll tell you that uh, uh, what you may not know is that uh, there was a lot of money a lot of cash that was put into that project okay mm. so if you are going to look at it as the uh, as the uh, you know, a normal, you know, when you are being naive. No, but, 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 oh, but, 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 a moment, let yeah. me, let me finish. Mm. Let me finish. Mm. Then, then, then you are being naive. And I don't think that uh, <laughs> this interview should be about that. But uh, let me, t let me tell you, if you really want, you know, to, I served as the Minister of Justice. Mm. Just go to the Minister, to the Minister of Justice today. Mm. Find the young men and women that are there and ask them about me. They will tell you the environment under which they worked and the subsequent environment under which they worked. Go to Lusaka City Council. There are people that are still alive there that I worked with. From the time when I was head of the department, legal, to the time when I was town clerk. Go and find out from them. Go to Kitwe City Council. There are still people that are alive there. Go generate to the Kitwe residents. Mm. Go and find out from there. And then you can come and ask me that question again. <laughs> okay? Mm. But the point, the point that I want to, to make to you is that uh, leave, leave that, uh, you know, that issue of... Uh, Jubilation, you know, it's very important because it's, it's very well because important. you don't have the complete yeah because you don't have the complete facts so I can forgive you you know I can forgive you for that you don't have the complete facts 
so you've got the tail end you know of the story you don't have the full facts so it would be unfair myself possibly and, and, and the public yes but i think that's uh, i don't want this to be <laughs> the point of discussion really yes but no we, we're trying to deal with these institutions <laughs> you know but, but i'll try to expand on how our institutions work mm. that's the point and uh, and i was zeroing this on the incident as the but i picked this from the incident at ECL's house mm. so, that so when you, you, hh comes back yeah. from scotland and says he, he was not he, aware he knew nothing about that that's a lie. So you, 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 That's a point you strongly, uh, you are strongly insinuating right now that HH had a hand in that. No, not as a, not as a hand. But let's use the correct, yeah. you know, way. Mm -hmm. To say that I didn't know mm. about the operation is not the same as saying I influenced it. That's not the same. What I'm refusing mm -hmm. is, that is, is his plea of ignorance. It's possible, right? No. Because, I, I, and if, if I followed you very well, and, and I think the public are also following you very well, yes. you are saying that sometimes these investigative wings work uh, in line with what they feel that the president wants. And sometimes I think they may be genuinely wrong. I may be, for example, DEC Director General, and I feel that if I follow uh, President Kabimba, I think the president in that direction will be happy. Meanwhile, I'm actually just wrong on my own. There is, and the president is actually ignorant. There are cases, there are cases, there are cases of, of, of zealousness. Mm. Okay? Okay, let's put a caveat to that. Yes, yes. yes. There are cases of, of zealousness. But the point that I was, I was trying to canvas here mm. is that uh, the plea of ignorance by HH about the incident at ECL's house is not true. One is commander-in-chief. Two, that operation was just too big. If he said to me, well, I didn't know that two police officers visited the, the, the former first lady. Yes, I would give him the benefit of the doubt. But 100 police officers? He was aware. Riot control, you know, vehicles there. Chigrinder, you know, to go and bring down the gate. That operation can be can be put in place by the police command. Hmm. They have the Minister of Home and, Affairs. And, and, the, and the Minister of Home Affairs doesn't know, and the President doesn't The Minister of Home Affairs is not uh, the Commander-in-Chief. Hmm. And the Commander-in-Chief doesn't know? No, sir. I refuse. From my experience hmm. and my knowledge of how government operates. Hmm. How would you, a few days ago we saw President, Vice President uh, for the Patriotic Front, uh, Honorable Kevin Winder, being arrested but was released on bond in no time. This is just one of the many cases where opposition leaders uh, do manage to secure bonds uh, in no time. Do you, don't you think the UPND have done a commendable job in ensuring that bonds are given on time to people charged with bondable offenses, unlike the way it was back then? You shouldn't even have been in the cells in the first place. Yeah, but the bond was given either, either way. No, 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 no. In the first place, Kevin is not a friend of mine. He's not somebody that I consider a friend of mine. Okay? But he shouldn't have been in the cells. <laughs> I don't know. What... Even, even as somebody who is not my friend. <laughs> he shouldn't have been in the cells in the first place. You to so, to a... give, so to give him police bond the following day was not a favor to you him. Said you serve together in government, you don't consider him as a friend? Sorry? You, you serve together in government, you don't consider him as a friend? No, no. Who says everybody that I served with you in government is my friend? So given is, is not... Uh, oh, yeah. I found everybody, I was appointed there, and everybody who was there was appointed, you know. Who says that everybody that Michael appointed is my friend? But the point I'm making is that he, Kevin is not somebody I consider my friend. Mm. But he shouldn't have been in the cells. He shouldn't have been in the cells. So to argue that he, they gave him bond, you know, the following day, mm. and therefore they have done him a favor, and UPND is a, is a government of, of laws, he, no. He shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have spent he a night. He shouldn't have spent a night. No, but but, but at least he didn't because make. that case was bondable. All that they should have done is charge him, you know, arrest him, and he tell him, sir, do you have two sureties? In fact, for a man like that, they don't even need a surety. Is a surety in himself. Where can he go? 
or the law. the public figure. The law has to be followed either way, whether you're a public figure or not. No, they do it. They do it at times. You know, they, you can you can be granted, the, you know, bail even in your own recognizance. Mm. You don't need the surety. Mm. It is done. You're not a flight risk. You know. You you know the court considers you a man of integrity. But, so you can be given. But at least in 48 hours we saw we, we saw uh, It doesn't matter. That's the argument. No, but I think it it, it, it matters, President. No, 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 it, it really matters that in less than 48 hours because these are the commitments and promises that President Heinrich Ichidam was making during his time in no, opposition. He said he said even if you want to be his pastor, what he said is this. That he, <laughs> don't want to he be, is yeah. <laughs> What he said is that nobody, nobody will be thrown into sales over an offense which is bondable. That's what he said. Over an offense which is bondable. The charge against uh, given Ruvinda was bondable. And therefore should have been given bond immediately by the police. Mm. So don't, don't change the story. Mm. Don't change the story. Nobody, nobody, anybody that has committed an offense or is, is, is a suspect in a case which is bondable must be granted, given bond by the police. Can, 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 can we be right to, to, to say that this administration deserves some kudos in handling cases that are bonded? Tell me, tell me the cases. Mm. Tell me the cases. We, we have picked on the, on the, on the given the case. I've told you, no, that's not even. And there are many cases mm. of opposition party leaders that have been arrested. And given and released on time. E EFF President Kasson de Mwenda is one of them. Sorry? EFF uh, president, Kasson Demwenda, is one of them that was arrested and in no time was, 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 uh, was released. A stride that we, sh we, should, com we should comment. He was released on what? He went into the cells? Yes. Because I don't know that incident. Yes. The time. He went into the cells? Yes, the time they were protesting. And then, and then after that he was released? He was released. Yeah, but that's the point I'm making, Paul. I don't know whether... Well, we have, the point I'm saying... They shouldn't, be, they shouldn't be arrested. They shouldn't be detained in the first place. Yes. The, the point that HH made was that uh, no citizen under his administration mm. should ever be thrown into police cells over a charge which is bondable. There was no caveat to that. There was no caveat. Even when he was, even when he was swearing in Lemka Joba, he repeated it. So how can you turn around now and say that uh, no, but it, they deserve kudos. Where? They don't deserve kudos. Uh, let, me, let me read out a few messages that uh, people are, are sending in. We have quite a number of messages. Of course, time will not allow us to, to read out all of them. Uh, in case you're just joining us, the Wednesday edition of The Big Hour, my guest is President Winter uh, Kabimba. we we'll discussing state of governance in Zambia. We want to get interactive with you. Keep on sending the messages on the number that is appearing on your screen. Good evening, sir. I'm following the program, and it's interesting, but the program is with a journalist who is one-sided. I think he is UPND. <laughs> That's the problem with the argument in Zambia. If they don't agree with you, you can I'm, only I'm, be this. <laughs> if they agree with you, you are something else. I'm not UPND. Um, Even if you were, what's wrong with that? <laughs> President Kabimba, you are a man. All that we are pleading with you is unite with a patriotic front and other political parties so that 2026 HH goes. I am less back from Lusaka. That one I agree with you. The church must go in 2026. <laughs> good evening, KBN, and good evening, Honorable. We like the way you are coming out. We just want to find out why um, are the same organ, uh, the same government you're talking about, why you are talking about the government now. Okay, the message is not very, very clear. You can um, uh, write back. Good evening, Paul and President Kabimba. I have a problem following your point, sir, because you seem to have a lot of things to say at the same time. You also seem to be too personal against President HH. He's president. C could it be that you wished f for your wish didn't happen when you announced the nation at that rally for PF that the presidency must remain in your class, Sinyangwe from Kafiwe? Uh, listen. You know, this issue of why are you discussing HH? Mm. 
okay. you, you seem to be too personal okay let me answer the question mm. hh before he became president was not mm. a topic of discussion in this country when he was just looking after his cattle in namala and choma it was not important mm. to any citizen in this country mm. okay mm. first point the second point is that he, HH now is chief executive officer. If you go to the constitution, he is the chief executive officer of government. The back stops at him. That's the man we should discuss. So any sin committed, you know, in government, mm. he atones for it. So Mr. Sinyango should understand that. I can't be discussing a minister who will say, but you know that I'm just appointed by the president. I have to deal with the, the appointing authority. So Mr. Sinyango should understand that, that the job of a CEO or even in a, in a company is that when the company makes a loss, mm. is the first one to resign. It doesn't, so, it doesn't say that I had a bad accountant, my managers were bad. No. In the Western world, he's the first one to resign. They, you have seen coaches and managers, you know, in, in, in Europe. When the team, you know, or, or doesn't make it in the league, they fail. They, they are not the ones that play the football. So why do they resign? Because they take the responsibility. So everything is personal on them. That's Great. what he... Great. So it's not about uh, my wish, you know. But, uh, yes, you know, if you want my wish, you know, between Edgar and HH, I voted for Edgar. That was my wish. Did it carry the day? No. Do I have any regrets? No. So between the two, you, 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 you prefer Edgar Long? No. I voted for Edgar Long. You voted for Edgar yes. yes. I preferred. Between the two, I preferred Edgar yes, Long. Yes, that's the same thing. This winter member should tell the nation why he used the motorcade to visit his family members in that province and why he uh, boasted till he got fired while sat up. What does that to do with the press of Minimi in Zambia today? <laughs> What does that to do with the price of cooking oil in Zambia today? Can we, can we, can we discuss the issues of livelihood today? <laughs> it's too early to, to judge President HH. Let us wait for his 10 years term to finish. Because what you're talking, it's just politics. Yes, it's politics. What else should I talk about? I haven't come here as a pastor. <laughs> so I'm talking politics. Good evening, Mr. Kabimba. Yeah. Mr. Kabimba is just talking about what he did and maybe that's why he was fired. It sounds very bitter. You sound very bitter, sir. Some of the about what? I mean, uh, you sound very bitter about the current administration. Mr. Kabimba does, does not mean what he is insinuating is what you'll be doing when you become president because you are not an angel too. Good evening, Honorable Kabimba and Paul. I like the way you are discussing, but why can't you invite Madam Masewo to the Big Hour to discuss the issue of medicines, not drugs in hospitals? Uh, please follow through with the Big Hour. We do host various personalities and various uh, topics of discussion. Man of God, you talk as if there's any... You talk if there is any mistake which the country president is doing since he's interested. You make some... Please ensure the message is very clear as you send. Let me read out maybe two more messages before we begin to uh, to wrap up. Presenter, that man is just bitter and has a serious grudge against HH, which only God knows. If he were to be the president, he can stop Kadarism suddenly. This behavior pattern that he can't just change in short time. The UPND are trying to bring change. Let him tell us why he was fired. Let him not hide behind the late Michael Sata, who did a good job for us. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> 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 what does that mean? Uh, they have started exposing themselves, uh, Chief Justice Quena. So let me read out two more messages. Good evening, Comrade uh, Kabimba. According to you, everything the UPND has done is wrong. If it were you, how would you have increased CDF? Is your party being a being credible opposition by opposing everything the UPND is doing? Kelvin Mukule from Kawe. Um, last one. Good evening, uh, Mr. President. Don't confuse the people of Zambia with your position. Dear moderator, this gentleman and the rest of the fellow uh, members, they love playing to the gallery. And I'm always laughing when I listen to his reasoning and criticism he brings up. They have been complete jokers more than they were when they were in power. Kindly ask him about the huge debt that his party PF left 
as to how they are planning to pay back the billions they borrowed on our heads. I've asked about the debt because Eurobond was first borrowed when it was not yet fired by Michael Sata. Quite a number of messages, uh, no time will not allow us to, to read. Would you want to respond to, to that? Let me, let, me tell, let, me, let me tell you this. Okay? Michael Sata firing me is not the worst thing that has ever happened in my life. People never forget. Zambians never forget. And yes. I, yeah. Yes. And I was not the only one fired by Michael Sata. And I was not the first and last person to be fired by any president. Okay? I think and and, and let, let me also tell you this. Mm. I told Mr. Sata, firstly, I want to say this, mm. that I was probably the only one that Mr. Sata asked whether or not I wanted to be a cabinet minister. So I want people to hear that. I didn't go back, I, I didn't go to Michael calling for a job. That's point number one. Point number two, I used to tell Mr. Sata, when the day comes when you don't need my services, please tell me, I'll walk away. I've heard similar sentiments from other people like okay. Bob Suching has also raised similar sentiments that he, was, he didn't request to be a minister, he was asked. Asked. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me also say this. Mm. When he, Michael Sata fired me, mm. you know what he said? He said I could continue as a nominated member of parliament. I refused. I refused. I said, if I'm not good as SG, I'm not good as a minister of justice, how can I be good as a, nominated a member of parliament? Mm. So the people that think that uh, really my being fired is the worst thing that has ever happened to me are wrong. Maybe, maybe also the circumstances. They are wrong. Because just at that point, you, you would have been the president uh, instead of uh, ECL because at that very, very point, that I'm was not, when... I'm not God. I'm not God. <laughs> I've, never, I've, never, I've never believed in that. You've I'm, never believed that? I'm not because God. if you're not fired this time, I think you'd have been no. former head of state to no, the current president. That's a hypothetical. Not really. No, no, no. Not no. really because you, you were the SG, the CEO of, uh, of the party then. Uh, listen. Listen, mm. if he had not been fired, mm. Michael died. Mm. The constitution of the party said that the vice president, Guy Scott, should assume the presidency. I would have remained SG. Mm. The party was supposed to go to a general conference to elect a presidential candidate or the president of the party. The PF constitution provides that the president of the party shall be the presidential candidate. So, that was to be an election. How can I guarantee that I would have won that election? I can't. High chances, maybe. Yes, high chances, high yes. Chances being the so, so, but, but, but you can't say, you know, and the, that has never kept me awake at night. Though, you know, that, this time uh, I would have been the president. That, 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 that I should have been <laughs> president, you know, and, and, and get into the headaches that, uh, that ECO is in today. No, sir. I sleep, you know, very peacefully, you know. <laughs> so, so to that extent, I think God did me a great favor. <laughs> yeah, but many are saying you sound very bitter. About what? You sound very bitter. You sound uh, against uh, President Daka and the No. V very personal. No, 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 no. I, I've, I've explained the, you know, why I'm personal. personal yeah, because I've explained uh, why I'm personal mm. because the back stops at him, mm. to use the American phrase. Okay? Uh, am I bitter, you know, against him? No. I'm actually using his own words. He is a kapamela, he is ka, 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 ka cooking oil, which he was waving himself. I didn't hold his hand. Mm. I didn't hold his hand. So all that all that I'm saying is that uh, UPND is a disaster. It's a disaster. Total disaster. Total disaster. And really, Zambians must see it for what it is mm. and get it out in 2026. You feel, that you, that you, is you, my. You feel in 2026 UPND can 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 leave the government? We will leave. Not can leave. UPND will leave government in yes, will leave government. You're, you're certain about that? Yes. I can bet my last dollar here. That UPND will leave yes. government in 2026? Yes. Not unless, unless you change the population of Zambia and bring another group of Zambia that has never suffered under UPND. But the current Zambians that are watching, you, you feel will, will change government uh, in the next two to three years? Oh, yes. If you, actually, if you ask them to vote even next week, mm. they can vote UPND out. 
in place of who? It doesn't matter. No, it, it matters because, no, no, because no, right no. now the argument that Zambians have been raising is what what is the alternative? We don't have credible uh, opposition apart from the PF, which seems to be, of course, commanding numbers even in, in the National Assembly. Which other political parties there? Uh, listen to give competition to, to the current administration. Uh, listen, listen. I have heard that argument. Hmm. Very logical argument. Uh, yes, but not every every logical argument is a correct argument. Okay. Hmm. You have two legs, and a chicken has two legs. Logic, but you are not a chicken. <laughs> so the conclusion is wrong. Mm. But we that, that poor Shingongo has two legs, mm. a chicken has two legs, therefore, in the conclusion, poor Shingongo is a chicken. The conclusion is wrong, but the logic is correct. So it's not everything that is logical, mm. that is true. Okay? So the, the point is this. In 1991, mm. There was no opposition political party. There was no opposition political party in 1991. But Kaunda was defeated. Very strong man, 27 years in power. He was defeated. Okay? So the opposition, Bwana, are the people of Zambia themselves. Not EF, not PF, not this political party, not that political party. It's the Zambian people. That is the opposition. Mm. The wretched of the earth, the wretched of this country that are going to bed hungry and they are in bed today, they are turning and tossing because they haven't had any food. Mm. That is HH's opposition, not me. So anybody who thinks, you know, academically that, you know, they must be, you know, oh, no. They will throw HH out. Mm and then turn later, you know, to figure out uh, whom they have brought in. That, that is how Zambians have voted over the years. Is that how they voted against Edgar, Edgar Longo? Yes. Yes. They were so fatigued with the, the goings on in, 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 in PF that they wanted Edgar out all the way. Not that HH was better than... No. Not at all. Not at all. It was more of a position than HH. How, 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 how could he have been better? Okay? How could he have been better? So that is how Zambia. So this, this, this theory, you know, which I hear, you know, being, you know, canvassed, you know, that, oh, no, there's no opposition, you know, you'll be shocked when the Zambian people just come together and say, it is Paul Shingongo and UPND out. Mm. That's what will happen. Because they can't continue going to bed hungry. They can't continue dying from uh, treatable diseases. They can't, you know, uh, continue not affording even the basics. So I'm not the opposition to HH. The Zambian people are. The Zambian people would, and, would, and, would, would need an umbrella in, in the form of a political party. Do you think e, EF uh, can be that alternative? Definitely. If you, if you listen to our programs, I can run this country better than HH. You, you, you think so? Yes. I've run government institutions. HH has never run any government institution. I've worked in government. I've run a ministry. But that's I, can, I can run in this country. I can swear to the living Lord. That's the only thing I can say. I can swear to the living Lord that I can run this country better than HH. Just because you've been a minister before, that doesn't mean that you can run this country better I than have, HH. I have experience, Bwana. I have experience. I've seen it. I've seen it. Oh. I've seen it all. Yet you are fired. And, 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 and yeah, you're claiming you can run the country better, but the, 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 the president fired you. The public have raised this, this, this concern. So what, what do you mean? So if, if, if I'm fired, if I'm fired... It means there was something wrong around you, around your leadership, around... No, there could have been something wrong, purely subjective between my appointing authority and myself. That's all. Yeah. That's all. You know, why do why why do we have members today in the economic front? If the biggest sin that I've committed is to be fired. No, one. 
Maybe that's the reason why Economic Fund is not even does not even have a council at the moment. No, 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 no. Maybe no. that's one of the reasons. How many political parties or people that have not been fired do not have councillors? No, but, but what logic is you that? have experience. Maybe they don't have experience. We no. have quite a number that are that are that are political party presidents why, who, are, who do not have the experience why, that you have. Why is PF why is PF losing elections today even to newly formed political parties? Why? How do you explain that? Hmm. Okay? So this is about the people and the people's judgment. But all that I'm telling you is that really, if you want to make a comparison between HHI, I can run this country better. That I can swear to the living Lord. <laughs> I can run this country better. The Zambians are the best judges of. I'm, 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 I'm conversing to the Zambians. <laughs> I'm talking to the Zambians. I'm talking to the Zambians through you. <laughs> okay? And I have run government institutions at the, at the local authority. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When I came from Kitwe to Lusaka, I found the Lusaka City Council was bouncing a check of 500,000 kwacha. Go and ask the people that worked with me. So I've been there. I've been there. I'm not even being hypothetical. I'm not even being theoretical. So that's the point, you know, that... I have a number of questions, President Kavimai. Put them to me. And, 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 and of course... I'm here. Will not allow me to go through all this. But maybe as we wrap up tonight, uh, there's been current discussions about the president and his predecessor throwing indirect jabs at each other. How healthy or unhealthy is this? We've seen President uh, ECO, President Takenich, they are throwing indirect jabs at, at, at each other. Is this is, is a healthy for our country? They're not, they're not throwing jabs at each other. It's HHU is throwing jabs at ECL. You're defending president. Uh, no. Why, why, why don't you accept an argument? Mm -hmm. Why don't you accept an argument? The man who is in power is HH. Mm -hmm. I've never heard ECL go to a forum and make reference to HH. Okay? But I've heard HH go to almost every forum and make reference to ECL. So this, this is a one-way boxing match. So don't be charitable to him that they are throwing jabs at each other. So it's him throwing, throwing jabs at each other. Yes. And he's doing that because he's on this path of vengeance against ECL. That's how I understand it myself. That's how I see it myself, and I'm sure I'm right. Okay? But also, you know, the sooner he stops this, HH, if I were to advise him and speak to him, real as president, okay, the more focused he will be on resolving the problems of this nation. If he continues being paranoid about Edgar, he is going to fail. Because even if even if he achieved whatever whatever he wants to do against the ECL, even if he achieved that, it will not change this economy. Don't change the economy. It will not improve you know, the dollar quacha rate, it will not you know, bring food on the on the table of Zambians, it will not it will do nothing. So if I were him, mm. I would shift my focus. And this, I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart. If I were to advise him, I would tell him, listen, shift your focus from being personal against ECL, be personal over national matters. That's where you should expend your energies. If he doesn't do that, Mwana, I can tell you, he will not succeed. Okay? Yeah. Because you see, you can't, you, you, can't, you can't get power from God with the primary reason of using it for vengeance. 
That's not the reason why God would have given him that power. I think he gave him the power for him to come and save the Zambian people and improve their welfare and their livelihood. Mm. Okay? Because he, uh, the country is larger than ECL. That's, that's my view. That's your view. Let me read out the last set of messages. Um, of course, I'm hoping we can create more time together in <laughs> uh, on the big hour and, and uh, exhaust some, a number of issues that are right. to, to right. look at. But of course, my director is telling me I'm getting to uh, the programming. Um, good evening, Mr. Kamiva. Please stick to farming. We don't want you now or in our next lives. Well, Mr. Kalimba is a disgruntled father. He doesn't know what he's talking about. How can you say ECO is better than HH with what we are seeing? Are those text messages from God? <laughs> from the public? Oh, from no. The... I thought you were reading them from God. <laughs> you are reading them from human beings. Yeah. From, ah, no. from the people you said are the, the, the opposition. No, but these are just, this is just an These opposition. are the opposition. Who says, the, the individual says he doesn't want me to be, he doesn't want me, he doesn't want me in his next life. In his what? Next life. Now or in the next life? Oh, I probably won't, don't want him also <laughs> in my next life. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me read out a few more messages. Paul, Honorable Kabimba is right. UPND will be kicked out in 2026. Please, people are crying. Good evening, uh, Honorable Kabimba. I feel you are just making noise because we would rather listen to someone who has never been in government. As of now, we don't have a credible presidential material yet. Go and find out from uh, your people. Winter, please, even if you stood on an election, UPND will scoop 80%. So far, my NAPSA money have even invested more millions. So UPND till, <laughs> till 2070. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Mr. Kabimba, you are bitter. I'll, I'll talk right now. In 2023, sir, you will know uh, your party, your dead party knows it. You failed in Monze. Your people left you. In Monze? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, what you are doing in Monza. Evening, Mr. Presenter. That winter is just too bitter and jealous of HH being the president. Winter will never be president of this country. Saying you'll never be president. Good evening, president. They said that about HH. <laughs> they said that about Michael Saka. <laughs> so that's not new. That's not new. Good evening, President Kabimba. What is your guarantee that you will govern the people of Zambia well when you failed PF members when you were PF SG? I say so because nearly every member of PF was against your leadership style as an SG of the party. Simpemba Arnold from Kitwe in Ulangiliro. Uh, similar sentiments that people have raised and that I think I've also raised them myself. Good evening, Mr. Kabimba. We really need Mr. Sata's vision, not just talking things that you know that if you are in that position, you can't even fulfill the promises. You the government is trying to put things in order, not a country full of cadres who are service to the Zambian people. Mr. Kabimba, your comment on FRA maize price, 280 kwacha, how will millimeter price then your take on Tazama pipeline uh, carrying finished diesel? Two more messages, uh, Honorable, before we close. Honorable Kabimba, your comment, okay, that's a sim similar message. Good evening, Mr. Kabimba. Why are you on that for? I thought you were supposed to sell yourself to us, but what I'm seeing you are there to expose what to expose what they were doing in their previous government. Some people when single sourced goods or services, the PF have been persecuted by UPND. While the UPND is busy single sourcing, where is the rule of law, Victor from Luansha? Mr. Kabimba, you are very ripe now in politics. What is your view in making an alliance, a strong alliance, so that HH goes? That, that will be my last message for tonight. Yeah. Alliance, let's begin from there. You said you are, you are now ripe. It's simply saying you are not ripe then. <laughs> uh, look, I've been in many, many alliances in my political career in Zambia. Mm. Okay? And I know uh opportunities for alliances yeah. and when those opportunities are not uh, are not mature or do not mature so that's 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 one field you know that uh, you know at, i was at the center of the pf upnd alliance as you may know 
So I know the dynamics of an alliance. Are you planning on entering an alliance with? That's not that's not something that you plan for. That is a dynamic that arises as the, as you go. As you go. Yeah. Any plans right now on the table? I said any, you don't any, plan. Any, any discussions with other political parties? No. I said you don't plan. Okay. No, for any an discussions alliance. right now? No. We don't have any discussions with any political party. Some were insinuating when uh, they saw you with the CF President Harry Kalaba. Some were insinuating that the possible uh, alliance coming forth. Oh, I have a lot of respect for Harry Kalaba. A lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for for HK. I I, I served with, you know in cabinet with him as a minister. You know I. Uh, I know his character, I, I know his level of honesty and integrity, so I have a lot of respect for, for him and I have a lot of time for him. Okay. So when, when both of us have the time you know, to get together, mm -hmm. we do get together and uh, do lunch. And uh, Are you discussing an alliance? He's a, he's, a, he's a good guy. You know, who, say, who says that wherever and whenever two, po two politicians meet, then they must be discussing an alliance? Can you, you, know, you, can, can you confirm or deny that there's discussions with alliance with the CF? It's, even, it's, 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 it's not a, even a proper question. I've, I've said to you that A, I have a lot of respect for Harry. Yeah, Kalaba. I think that's, a, that's understood. Okay, so who we'll says that because of respect for him, therefore there is an alliance? That's, that, that's what I'm asking, just for clarification purposes. If, he, if an opportunity arose, if an opportunity arose, I would definitely not doubt to have an alliance with Harry. Again, you see this background that I've given you is somebody that I know, is somebody that I respect. So if an opportunity arose for us to have an alliance, certainly I think that is something that he would consider. Both of us would consider. I'm sure if you ask him the same question, he would say the same thing. Last year, as we close, uh, President Kawimba, HH uh, could be seated right now and watching and hearing you speak. What would be your words to him? President Akhande uh, HM may be listening right now and watching. I don't want to say anything to him. You, you, you don't have. You, I that's, that, that's, that's the role of opposition, checks and balances. I've written, I've written the man two letters, very sober letters, hmm. bringing to his attention certain national matters. He has had no courtesy to respond to any one of those letters, even just to delegate somebody junior to respond to me. So, he knows it all. Oh, God bless him. You've raised serious issues in those letters and there's been no response. It has been no response. Two letters delivered to the State House. And I know he has seen them. The recent being when? I can't even remember. This year? Yeah, this year. I think one was last year, one was this year. So yeah, and, I, and I was raising governance issues. Mm -hmm. I was trying to bring, you know, to his attention, you know, governance issues. Because I had no KTC, you know, to... So what am I going to say to him through KBN? When the letters are in his office? Yes. So he's president. He knows it all. Good luck to him. President Kalimba, thank you so much for finding time and honoring the invite to be on the Wednesday edition of The Big Guy. It's always a pleasure interacting with you. The pleasure is mine and thanks to KBN and the thanks, you know, uh, viewers out there. Those of you who don't want to see me in your next life, I also don't want to see you in my next life. So um, it works both ways. Uh, those of you that uh, do not agree with me, I still respect your view. Those of you that agree with me, I definitely and certainly respect you know, your congruence of your views and mine. So I've covered everybody, you know. <laughs>